how to learn effectively from programming tutorials. So I've been making programming tutorials on YouTube for almost four years now. And I think by now I have a pretty good feeling for what people are doing wrong when they watch these videos in their approach to learning. And this applies to all forms of programming, app development, game development, doesn't matter. So if you find that you often watch programming tutorials and you think you understand what is taught there, you think you get it, but then later when you try to apply it yourself, you don't know what you have to do or you don't even know how you have to start. If this sounds like you, you have to watch this video. So I think the main mistake people are doing when they watch a programming tutorial and the reason why they can't really get out this tutorial hell is because they just follow the instructions of the tutorial step by step. They just do exactly what the tutorial tells them to do. Or if it's um, a screencast on YouTube, for example, they just write out the exact same code that the instructor writes. It's basically copy pasting. It's not really different from copy pasting, just that you will type it with the keyboard. But you're just copying what you see in the tutorial and this way you, you don't learn. Instead, you should apply the stuff you learn in a tutorial on a separate project, on your own project, as soon as possible. So ideally, you should do this immediately while you are watching the tutorial. So what I usually do when I follow a tutorial is I, I do follow the instructions of the tutorial step by step first. So I do the stuff that they are telling me to do. I have the same example project as in the tutorial because this is the first, the first time you really try out something. You just need this, uh, you just, just need someone holding your hands basically. But then I also have a second project opened. And this other project has to be a little bit different than uh, the tutorial project. This is important because only this way it forces you to think when you try to apply the knowledge from the tutorial to the project. So uh, let's say uh, the tutorial builds some kind of beginner app with a database and UI and a little bit of architecture. Then the project I'm building for myself has a little bit of a different UI. I save different data into database. I try to apply the same architecture, but with my own requirements that are a little bit different. And when I write tests, then my tests have to be a little bit different. And this is really the important part that your project is different than the tutorial project. Because this way, every time you try to apply one of the steps of the tutorial, you always have to think. You have to think, okay, how do I have to change this that I can apply it to my own project? What's the, what's the essence of this step? What are we trying to do? And how can I do this by myself? And because your project is different than the tutorial project, there will also be steps that are not described in the tutorial and then you have to Google them. You should not be lazy and just skip them or uh, trash your whole project. You should Google these steps that you are missing. And this again helps you learn more. You should also play around with the code. You should change the stuff. And if something in the tutorial doesn't make sense to you, if you think there's a little chance that it could be wrong in the tutorial, then apply the what you think is the correct approach to your project first. So if a certain kind of syntax doesn't make sense to you, or if you think you could skip a step or write something in a way that makes more sense, then go ahead and do that because there are only two options. Either you're wrong, which is good because then you see the solution and you learn why you're wrong. You can correct it and then you remember this because this way you really have this direct experience by doing it wrong first and then learning how to do it better. This is perfect. It's perfect for learning. The other possibility is that you indeed did it better than the tutorial, which obviously is great too, because it means you uh, you paid attention and you uh, thought for yourself and you uh, realized how you can do something better than what was shown to you. This is great as well. But again, I do both steps. I first do the steps of the tutorial one by one. So if they have a sample project for me, then I uh, use the sample project to try the stuff they teach on this project first. 
only then as the second step I try to apply it to my own project. And I think it's good to do both steps because if you uh, skip the tutorial project, it's easy to miss something. It's easy to miss small things that you just didn't see immediately. So do both, don't be lazy. But while you are doing the tutorial steps first, try to avoid copy-pasting code. Even if you think that you understand what you're reading, it's better if you type it out yourself. You just learn it a little bit better by typing it yourself. And sometimes there are these little nuances that you don't notice. Maybe a little, a little variable is handled a bit differently and you didn't notice it by just reading it, but you will most likely notice it when you type it out yourself. So try to avoid copy-pasting unless it's some kind of helper class that you just don't need to understand at all. In some tutorials, we just have to copy-paste some stuff. But uh, whenever you can write it out yourself, when it's a little piece of code or when it's important that you uh, understand it and be able to apply it yourself later, then try to avoid copy-pasting it. Another thing I really like to do while I'm following the tutorial itself is to hide the solution whenever possible. So I just scroll to the parts where the instructions for the next steps are given. Then I open the tutorial project, not my, not my own project, this is still the tutorial project. I open this and then I try to uh, come up with the solution myself. So re just read the instructions, try to come up with the solution and in most cases you will not be able to uh, come up with it yourself because you haven't learned it yet. But just by trying it, just by trying to come up with something, you learn so much more than just reading it, reading the solution immediately. Because you, were, you thought about it, you thought through the steps that are necessary, and you try to uh, implement these steps with the, with the code, with the stuff you know at this time. And when you do this and then see the solution, then your, your brain just makes this connection between what you thought was right and what is actually right. And I think this way you just learn so much more. And when you do this approach to learning, you will find that it feels a bit uncomfortable. But this is, this is good because discomfort means that you are actually learning something. Because if learning or programming feels easy all the time, then it means that you're either just copy-pasting or that you are just doing what you already know. And it's okay to uh, just code for the joy from time to time, of course, but you have to make sure that you don't rest in this comfort zone for too long because it's very unlikely that you are really learning something new in these phases. So real learning, real deliberate practice feels a bit stressful. It's just part of the learning process because this is how your brain handles um, making new connections. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel um, easy, but it also alternates with these moments of joy when you finally get something, when it finally clicks, and when you realize that you, uh, you increased your competence a little bit because now you have built this new skill and you are you didn't just copy paste or try to memorize something. You really understand how this stuff works and how you can come up with it yourself in the future. So try to purposefully seek out these moments of discomfort. Try to learn difficult new stuff and don't be lazy. Don't just copy paste. Try to really implement it yourself. This, in my opinion, is really the, the key to learning programming or any other skill for that matter effectively but it's also important that you uh, you build some resilience you if you get discouraged very fast when it becomes hard then you would, will just give up so uh, don't be discouraged if something is difficult if you don't understand it immediately i have i'm learning stuff every day that i don't get but when you keep tinkering with it and when you keep repeating these steps by implementing them yourself again and again, then you will eventually get it. And ultimately it all comes down to effort and then repetition. Also, don't just try to memorize the code or the steps you have to implement because memorizing something is often a sign that you don't actually understand it. You basically just copy the steps 
from your memory. Instead, it's important that you actually understand why you implement something a certain way. We can always look up the syntax for a piece of code or the steps from Google. This is what Google search is for. Google is for memorizing stuff. Our human brain is for understanding stuff and knowing when to use what tool and how to come up with new solutions by yourself. And you really only learn this by thinking for yourself, as I explained by implementing the stuff you learn in a little bit different form in your own projects. And this way you will also realize that you will automatically memorize certain steps just because you implemented them so often. This is great. It's good if we don't have to look up everything all the time, but don't force it. Don't approach learning with the goal of memorizing something. Approach it with the goal of understanding and the memorization will come automatically for the stuff where it's necessary. Also, you should find a way to teach what you're learning yourself. For most people, that's a blog post because they're most comfortable with writing. You can also create tutorials, but you can also just explain the stuff you learn to a person. You could actually even explain it to your dog. The only point is that you um, try to explain it properly because there's a difference between thinking you understand something and actually explaining it to someone. Because only when you explain it, you will notice that there are certain gaps that you still have where there's a step in your explanation missing and you don't know how to bridge that gap. This way you notice that you still have holes in your knowledge. And these holes are very easy to miss when you, uh, when you never actually try to explain it to someone. But if you create content on the internet, please don't create lazy content. I can't tell you how often I find my own videos turned into blog posts with the exact same code, the exact same explanations, because people just copy paste them and then try to turn, uh, transform them into their own content. And by now it should be obvious that this doesn't make you learn something. This is just a lazy approach where you don't have to think at all. It won't benefit you. It won't benefit your, your brand or how other people or your reputation. It's, it's basically just a bad idea all around. But if you put in the effort and if you practice deliberately, like I explained in this video, then you can actually learn difficult stuff pretty fast. And the great thing about this is that you also don't have to, uh, you don't have to invest so much time into it because you can spend eight hours a day just messing around and doing easy stuff that doesn't really make you learn something. Or you can spend like two hours of deliberate practice and you will get so much out of it and you will find that you learn so fast. So even if you have a full-time job on the side, maybe you're, that's not even related to programming and you only have a little bit time every day for coding, then uh, you can really gain a lot out of this little bit of time with deliberate practice. So even one hour a day can be really, really effective. And you will be surprised how fast you can learn if you just make it, make it effortful. If you make sure that you actually uh, have to think for yourself. Anyway, that's what I have to say about this. And I can't really come up with anything else. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I want to make a few more of these talking head videos in the future. Activate this little bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss any future videos. And leave a like because it helps the, the video and the channel. And then I hope I see you again. Take care.